The production of high-quality, uniformly baked goods requires high-quality ingredients, balanced formulas, and correct handling. The following video outlines the 13 steps to be employed in the straight dough method. Accuracy in scaling is essential to avoid formula imbalances. Mixing is an extremely important step. The objectives are to obtain a uniform distribution of all ingredients, to hydrate the ingredients, and to develop the gluten to the desired gluten window, whether a short mix, improved mix, or intensive mix. Bulk fermentation is the time between mixing and scaling or dividing. During this time, the dough is allowed to rest and the yeast to work. Conditioning of the dough takes place, the gluten becomes extensible, and flavor is produced. During this critical phase, the dough must be protected from skinning. The punch, or more accurately, the stretch and fold, is rarely used when the bulk fermentation is under one hour. For artisan breads, or breads with a longer fermentation, stretches and folds are given between three quarters of an hour to an hour, depending upon the length of the BFT. This is not a remix, because the greatest benefits are obtained through the folding action. Three functions of this step are the development of the gluten to strengthen the dough, equalizing the temperature of the dough to ensure uniform fermentation, and expelling large pockets of gas. Dividing or scaling is the first step in the makeup process. The dough is divided into pieces of correct weight, either through scaling by hand or dividing by machine. When scaling by hand, avoid using too much dusting flour. The purpose of rounding is to expel gas from the dough piece, form a skin, and seal the dough. This is to promote gas retention, preventing sticking, and to yield a uniform dough piece ready for molding. Rounding may be performed either by hand or machine. Excess dusting of flour not only makes it impossible to round properly, but is also costly and detrimental to loaf quality. The object of the intermediate proof is to allow the dough structure to recover from the dividing and rounding and to condition it for the molding operation. In smaller shops, dough pieces are left on the bench or placed in a closed cabinet. In larger shops, automatic intermediate proofers are used. Whenever the intermediate proofing takes place, the dough pieces should be well protected from drafts to avoid skinning. Average intermediate proofing takes from 10 to 20 minutes. The object of molding is to form the dough piece into a desired form. This may be done mechanically or by hand. The principles of molding are degassing the dough and forming it into a cylindrical shape, applying sufficient pressure to seal the roll and extend it to the desired length. The dough piece should be molded evenly without tearing the skin. Failure to mold correctly or to use sufficient pressure will result in a baked loaf of uneven grain and poor texture. Care must be taken to ensure the molded dough piece is placed in the pan seam down and that it fills the length of the pan. The final proof is a period of accelerated fermentation during which the dough piece expands. In order to permit maximum expansion of pan bread, the proofing should take place in conditions with a relative humidity of 90% and at a temperature of 32 to 34 degrees Celsius, or 90 to 95 degrees Fahrenheit. Dry conditions in the proofer will cause drying and skinning of the dough surface. The baking process is the final and most important step in bread making. The gas cells expand to give the loaf its final volume, a process called oven spring. The protein coagulates and forms the loaf structure, and partial gelatinization of the starch occurs to make it edible. Many other changes take place such as browning of the crust through the Maillard reaction. Bread flavor is formed principally in the crust and penetrates from there into the crumb. Cooling generally takes place in ambient or surrounding air, either in a moving cooler or on racks. When the loaf has reached an internal temperature of 32 degrees Celsius or 90 degrees Fahrenheit, slicing can take place. Slicer blades must be kept sharp and be regularly changed. Wrapping a warm product will result in condensation on the interior of the wrap. This can cause the loaf to become soggy and can cause mold growth. Overproofed breads can make bagging difficult as the loaf is larger than the bread bag.